Christine, let me just finish in by honoring Armenia today. Honoring, especially in the day like today, we keep Armenia more than ever in our hearts, in our souls, in our spirits. It's an important day. It's a, it's a day not to be forgotten. And it's a day that makes us reflect on the purpose of, of peace and justice in the world. And this is the reason why the wines exist in the, in the very beginning. Thank you so much. Blessings and Vardam. Uh, yep. Congratulations in advance. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, everybody, for being uh, around uh, this webinar. Now, let me start with the presentation as promised, and then we will have a, a round of question and answers. I will try my best to finish it uh, very quickly, uh, and then we will have time to discuss it. I think uh, just uh, uh, to start my presentation, uh, I, I, I want to quote this, uh, what you see now on your screen which is uh, history is the self-consciousness of humanity. It's, uh, it's, these are the words of Johann Gustav Droysen, who is one of the biggest historians in the world. And I think uh, uh, this is what has been uh, uh, my aim to put together this presentation and also to ask you to join, because I think uh, we, YMCA as an organization who has big history and uh, who has big legacy, should always be aware of it because that's our self-consciousness. Otherwise, we will, be, we will be a minimum sleeping, even if a giant. We, we, we need always to look back to our history because we will find lots of motivation, lots of lessons, and lots of inspiration in our history. And that's why I call this presentation Forget Them Not, uh, because this presentation is about things and people that we should not forget. Uh, and, I, and I kind of uh, connected it with, uh, with, the, with the flower, which is called Forget Me Not. And this flower is the symbol of the Armenian genocide commemoration. And I think, uh, I think uh, we, we, we should remember, uh, as Juan, you said, genocide and the lessons of genocide not just as an abstract something happened, but as something that happened to specific people. As something that, uh, the suffering which people like us had and went through. And many of them didn't manage to, to, to even, you know, go through. But, but, but if we look at it as, as, as an individual suffering, I think it becomes even bigger. So let me start, my story and my story is about the YMCA and its relation to the Armenian people, its relation to Armenian history in those times of, of the Armenian genocide, in those times of the end of 19th century, beginning of 20th century. Uh, we all know that the YMCA started as a, as a Protestant lay movement in Northern Europe and in, 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 in North America. So we, and it took some time until it, it, uh, it uh, arrived in other parts of the world, especially in Catholic countries, in Orthodox countries. And it is very interesting that in the beginning of this emerging of the YMCA, Ottoman Empire was, was one of the biggest developments of the YMCA in the world. Uh, it actually infiltrated into the Ottoman Empire, the idea of the YMCA, in early 80s of 19th century, through mainly through American missionaries who were already stationed in, uh, in the Ottoman Empire and uh, they were running different kind of uh, aid uh, programs for the Christian people in the Ottoman Empire, but they were especially involved in educational programs. They were, they, they were lots of high education institutions in the Ottoman Empire uh, created by uh, by these missionary organizations, and uh, and the, most of the the students of these missionary uh, these uh, colleges and universities were Armenians, also Greeks, Bulgarians, the Christian population, the Muslim population of the Ottoman Empire could not join these institutions, not because the Americans, the missionaries, didn't want them, but it was banned by the Ottoman government itself. Uh, you know that the Christians had no right to educate. Uh, the Muslim population of the, of the empire. So there were many colleges 
And among them, there was this Armenia College in Harbor, which is Harput now in Turkey, Syrian Protestant in Beirut, the Robert College in Constantinople, which is very famous college, by the way. And until uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, all the presidents of the Turkish Republic graduated from Robert College. Just a fact to, to know. Bithania College in Partizak was very, very famous. Central College in Aintab. Uh, by the way, I, I, later on I found out that the grandmother of my wife graduated from this college in Aintab. Anatolia in Marzvan, uh, which is uh, very famous because uh, Misak Metzarent, very famous Armenian poet, uh, was, uh, was, was studying in that college. St. Paul's College in Tarsus and International College in Smyrna and a number of more. So these colleges became the, the, the places, the, the nucleus where the YMCA idea got very, uh, started to spread among the young people in the Ottoman Empire. And just to compare, sometime in, in the end of 19th century, the idea of the YMCA was almost like the idea of Facebook now. So it was very popular. It was a social network, in fact but a real one, not virtual one. So young people were especially interested in, in, joining, in joining the, the YMC. So already in 1881, at the YMC World Conference in London, there were delegations representing, de delegates representing Ottoman Empire. So very early in the, I mean, my friends know that the YMC was established in uh, 1844 and it became really an international movement in 1855, but but you know, it, it, was, it is very early in the YMCA history that the Ottoman Empire were represented at the, at the, uh, at the world level of YMCA meeting. And these representatives definitely were not, uh, uh, you know, Turks. They were Armenians, Greeks, Bulgarians, you know, the Christian minorities. So motivated by the development of, of uh, the YMCA in Ottoman Empire, uh, John Armot, who is a Nobel Peace Prize laureate and one of the most famous YMCA persons, my colleagues know him. So he decided to travel to Konstantinopolis or to Konstantinopol to inspire the YMCA work in the Ottoman Empire. So it was back in 1895. But instead of witnessing, uh, you know, the, the, the nice YMCA welcome and, you know, good work, he, he happened to be a witness of the first Armenian massacres in the, not not first big Armenian massacres in the Ottoman Empire, uh, orchestrated by Sultan Abdul Hamid uh, back in 95-96, where 300,000 Armenians were killed during these massacres. And, 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 and that, during that time, there were also Greeks and other Christian nations killed, but Armenians were you know, the, the most suffering. So John Armot then wrote, there would be no real peace for the Christian people scattered through Asia Minor and along the Bosphorus until this barbarous Ottoman government is swept from the face of the earth. So that was, that was the first encounter of the international YMCA with the YMCA reality in the Ottoman Empire. And it was uh, uh, more than 10 years of kind of uh, the dark period where the YMCAs, uh, again, in the colleges, they continuing their existence, but they were really isolated, like we are all isolated today in, in, in these missionary centers. They could not go out, do any activity. But in 1908, Sultan Abdul Hamid, who is also called Bloody Sultan, got arraigned. You know, he, he was kicked out from, from his uh, throne and a kind of constitutional uh, rule was established in the Ottoman Empire. So that opened some opportunities and immediately the international YMCA, especially American YMCA, started to, to, to uh, send people to help the, the, uh, the, the small local YMCAs which were created by the local people in America, in, in Ottoman Empire. So Lowe's and Chambers, uh, an, a Canadian, uh, a British, you know, a Canadian from, from, uh, from, from uh, British Columbia uh, was, stationed in uh, Ottoman Empire as an interna uh, by the International Committee of the, of the YMCA of the USA as the YMCA, first YMCA staff in Ottoman Empire. And, uh, as, as, uh, and it, the position was called YMCA Traveling Secretary. 
so that was already a kind of a, a plan of you know developing the YMCA in, in, in Ottoman Empire. But again, you know, what happened, the first challenge those in chambers faced was 1909 massacres in Adana, where 30,000 Armenians were slaughtered. It's just one city where in 1909, in April, these days, again, uh, 30,000 Armenians were slaughtered by, by, by the Turks because, uh, you know, because they, 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 they you know, it, they, it was orchestrated again because the, the, the Turkish re uh, reactionist forces were thinking that the Armenians are, are getting too much power, you know, after the revolution there. So they decided to punish them. So the city was burned, as you can see in the picture, and the Armenians were, were massacred. And during these times, the, the, you know, the, 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 British vice, the British consulate was paralyzed. So, and it could not uh, kind of intervene in, into, into, into the affairs of, you know, this situation. They could not intervene to stop the to violence. Uh, as a matter of fact, people were afraid to intervene because the, the, the mob in the street was, was just crazy. So this young person, Laws and Chambers, became so active being a, a British citizen, you know, he was, uh, you know, he was not afraid. So he were, became so active intervening into the situation, trying to stop the massacres. So he was, uh, uh, you know, as a force majeure, he was appointed by as a vice, vice consul of Britain in that town. And be, having, be, having that title, he then got the power to really intervene and stop the massacres uh, in Adana. So a young YMCA secretary took the political role where the politicians were afraid to do that. And he managed to be one of the persons who could stop, the, who could stop these massacres. And as a, as a result of that, the Adana YMCA became the first international aid project of the world YMCA. So, in the history of the World YMCA, the first eight project ever, I was summoned together to help the Armenians of Adana and the YMCA of Adana, because before the massacres, uh, they built a beautiful library in Adana and a beautiful YMCA center, and it was burned by, during the massacre. So it was already a good YMCA operation there. But however, after Adana, uh, the next five years were, were the best period of, uh, of the YMCA history of the, of the Ottoman Empire. There were almost 30 local associations. By the way, there were local city and student associations in the, in the Ottoman Empire. A very interesting thing. Now we don't have YMCA student associations. We only have local associations. But at that time, YMCA was extremely popular among the universities and among the students. And most of the members, constituency of these uh, local associations were Armenians, most of them. So they were YMCA's in Harbert, Marzvan, Van, Eintab, Adana, Marash, Tarsus, Smyrna, Bartizak, Adabazar, Kostan, Napol, and so on so later. So, uh, uh, the YMCA was a very, very important or organization for the Armenian young people in the Ottoman Empire. Extremely important role played it, it in their lives and in their future. And in fact, it played an extremely important role also in, in educating the Armenian young people in a way that later on, thanks to their education, either in crafts or in, in science, thanks to their education, many of them could survive the genocide and find second life somewhere else in the world. Many of them got their knowledge, skills, uh, you know, thanks to the, to, uh, to, to the educational programs offered uh, to the, by the YMCA. By the way, most of the constituents were women, girls, rather than men. So it's very interesting, you know, in a very, very patriarchal country, you know, in a very, very patriarchal period, which is, you know, beginning of 20th century, the YMCA in Ottoman Empire was working very closely, mostly with, with, uh, with women. And it's very interesting that uh, in April uh, 1911, uh, the, the World Students Christian Association, which is the organization established by John R. Mott, and for what he received the Nobel Peace Prize, 
organized a conference in, in Kostanapolis of, of this organization. And it took place in YMCA Washburn Hall at Robert College. You can see the picture, a beautiful YMCA property in Robert College, which is not a YMCA property, of course, now. And, uh, and this motivated very much the YMCA's in the empire. I mean, imagine, you know, in a big international conference, hundreds of participants. So people were so motivated that immediately after that, April 30, 1911, Union of Christian Associations in the Turkish Empire, this is the name of the organization, was established as the first YMCA, YWCA joint movement ever. So this is the first organization where men and women could be together as, as, as one, one movement. This was the first joint movement ever established. Very progressive. Uh, in October 15, in Constantinople, a magnificent YMCA building was inaugurated, by the way, by uh, Ambassador Henry Morgenthau. But almost immediately after the Ottoman, immediately after the Ottoman government pushed to close down the YMCA work in all the empire. October 1915, the Great War was escalating and the genocide of Armenians was at its full scale. So the YMCA had to rent the building to the American embassy in order not to get it, uh, I'll say, captured, taken away from, from, from it. All the YMCA's were closed because uh, as you know, the, the Turkish Sultan declared jihad on Christians and any Christian operation was, was banned uh, in, in Ottoman Empire. But uh, the YMCA got an access granted back to, to Turkey or to Ottoman Empire after the end of the Great Wall, after Turkey capitulated in October 1918 during the amnesty of Mudros. And, but the operations of the YMCA were limited to the areas under direct control of allied uh, states, which is Britain, uh, France, mostly Britain and France. Huh? Uh, and Kostanapol YMCA was under the, uh, under the protectorate of uh, Britain. Cilicia, which is uh, Mediterranean, South Mediterranean coast of, East Mediterranean coast of Turkey. Adana, Inta, Marash in Cilicia were under French protectorate, and Smyrna, which is today's Izmir, you know, uh, was under Greek protectorate because the city was, uh, you know, was uh, under uh, part of Greece at that time. Uh, the YMCA in Cilicia was acting within the framework of the American Committee for Relief in Near East America, which is which was a big. Uh, U.S. Congress uh, supported aid to the, uh, to, the, to the victims of the Armenian genocide. And it was also uh, in Kilikia, uh, it was also protected by the French troops among which was the Armenian Legion, the, the Armenian troops which, which, was, which, which were stationed in Cilicia. <laughs> they were doing a lot of humanitarian aid work in Cilicia, rebuilding the YMCA especially in Adana. There was even tennis courts in Adana during that time, camps and other things. But after almost three years of existence, by the end of 1921, which is December, uh, both the Ar Armenians and the YMCA uh, had to finally abandon Kilicia, Kil Cilicia as the French handed it over to Kemalists. The Kemalists are this uh, Republican Turkey, the new Turkey which was not recognized by, at that time by the international community. It was like a revolutionary moment, but the French made a deal with them and they, and they just handed over it to, to, to Turks. And the Armenians had to leave. Of course, the French were trying to protect the Armenians, kind of organize their departure, but that was a big chaos. So thousands of people again got massacred uh, you know, in, that, uh, in that turmoil also. And in that turmoil, uh, uh, when the French troops were retreating from Eintab, uh, not Marash to, to uh, from I, uh, Marash to Eintab, two YMCA secretaries from Detroit, James Perry and Frank Johnson, were killed by the Turkish brigands. And uh, this is a very interesting thing that uh, you know uh, we 
uh, I was behind a, a long standing partnership with Detroit YMCA. Uh, there was a partnership between Detroit YMCA because before the big uh, recession of 2008, which badly hit the YMCA and then they had to stop the, the partnership. And that partnership was because of these two guys, because in Detroit YMCA people still remember these two names. They, are, they remain proud of these two, two young people who, who gave their life for, for the humanitarian cause. And it was not the end of the sad story of the YMCA in the Ottoman Empire, because uh, the last piece of the YMCA in, in Asia Minor was the YMCA in Smyrna. And it, and it ceased its ex existence in September 1922, when the Turkish, again, the Kemalist army, uh, sieged the city of Zmirnia, and they burned the, the, the Christian quarters of the city, Armenian and uh, Greek quarters, and the people had to flee on the quay, on the, on the side of the sea. 250,000 people just sandwiched between the water and and, uh, and the fire. So they not, could not go to their homes. Uh, it was fire there and they could not jump into the sea because the sea, I mean, how long they could hang on the sea. It was interestingly that uh, uh, the, the American, Italian, French, British navies, military navies were just hanging on, 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 the, on, the, on the coast at a gunfire distance and watching what's happening there, but they could not intervene because it was a very confusing situation. You know, people were, uh, it was a political decision to make, you know, if you intervene, then you declare war to, to, to Kemal Atatürk. So, uh, I mean, that was a long communication. And also they were already, it was the period when, to tell you frankly, everybody was trying to flirt with, uh, with Kemal is Turkey because, you know, there were business interests. So, the politicians were quite refraining from taking any action. And here comes another YMCA hero. His name is Asha, Asha Jennings, who was a cracked young person. He had horrible tuberculosis and he was in very bad uh, health condition. And he actually, from upstate New York, he decided to move to uh, uh, Near East because he wanted to, to find his end close to Jerusalem. So his aim was to, to go to Ottoman Empire and then somehow to find a way to, to go to Jerusalem and, and, you know, because he knew that he doesn't have a long life. But during the, this uh, catastrophe, uh, Asha Janning suddenly, as he, as he wrote, uh, felt the hand of God. And he decided to take an action. So the first thing he was doing, he organized the YMCA building as a, as a, as, a, as a maternity hospital. Because imagine 250,000 people, among them were a lot of pregnant women, hanging on the, on the key day, two days, one week, they, they, they had to give birth. So he organized the YMCA building, he fetched some doctors to help these women. And then he used his American citizenship at that time, you know, like Tur Tur Turkish army was very afraid of uh, you know, European and American kind of citizens because, you know, they didn't want to have problems with them. So he, he used this being an American and he started to hide in this YMCA building the other people who were the most vulnerable. But then he, he decided that this is not enough. So he started to think what to do, uh, you know, in order to save everybody. So without going into much details, but he triggered an operation which then unfolded the evacuation of everybody on the key. So he saved the lives of 250,000 people, together with US Navy officers, with, with then Italian and British army soldiers, but he triggered everything without having any uh, authorization of the government. So this rescue operation started by European and American soldiers without having the command of their chiefs that they can do that. And later on, they, the commands, they had to agree with this uh, operation because then they could not revert it. And, and Asa Jennings, just I want to hang a little bit here and he died very young. He, he, he got very big honors in, in Greece. 
uh, and uh, and he 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 was actually after this operation, the U.S. State Department started to use him as a as a kind of ambassador of uh, uh, of honor in different situations. You know, another hero. And then uh, the last thing which remained in 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 Turkey after all this, uh, Smyrna and. Uh, uh, and Adana and everything. There was the YMCA in Constantinople, as a as a as a megapolis, as a as a metropolitan city. The, 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 they could not just the, the, you know take and cut it. So the YMCA existed there until 1939, July 14, when the Turkish court uh, passed a decision to to close it and to confiscate the property. And to give it to uh, and to give it to a foundation which is specially created to manage it. And this foundation is called uh, Yusel Kultur Vakfi, which we know YMCA people we all know well. They have been cooperating with them, and this picture is the only picture which you know from the history which is taken by me. It's uh, because we were having. Uh, our first Peace Work Institute session in this building in, in Istanbul. It's just next to Aga Sofia. You can see beautiful location, magnificent building. Uh, it is the building which was opened in 1950 and uh, by uh, Henry Morgenthau. And it's still there. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it's not YMCA, of course, it's, it's Yutzel. And here the story of the YMCA in the Ottoman Empire finishes. And let me go to, to the next chapter, which is now uh, Eastern Armenia or Caucasus was Russian Armenia, let's say, because at that time Armenia was part, together with Georgia, was part of the uh, Russian Empire. So in, in May 1918, and this is our period, now goes to, uh, capturing from the, from the exhibit of Armenian National Institute, the only Americans left in Yerevan in May were John Elder and James Arrow. Uh, and they were witnessing the, the unfolding of the humanitarian disaster in Eastern Armenia now, which was caused by the Armenian genocide and, uh, uh, and the Great War. And these guys were only in their early 20s. Everybody else was, was afraid, they, they, they all left. I mean, the Turkish troops, uh, Kemalist tr troops were, no, sorry, not Kemalist, but Ottoman Empire troops were just on the doorstep of Yerevan and Echmiadze. And if these two cities would fall, then there would be no Armenia today. And probably, <laughs> I, I would not, not exist, not probably, definitely, and this webinar would not be, would be, would not be held. So they were the brave, young, 20-year-old boys who, who stayed, who decided to stay and see what's happening. But then John Elder writes, you never can tell what may happen. Just as the end seems at hand, the, the pendulum swings the other way. After a two-day battle at Sardarabad, the Turks have been completely rooted. So by miracle, or maybe not by miracle, but by bravery of Armenian people, uh, we won the, the, probably the most decisive battle of Armenian history in May 1918, which saved Eastern Armenia from, from, from being genocided and massacred too. Very interesting. Today I shared with, with some of you the, the video from yesterday's commemoration of the Armenian genocide where the churches ring the bells. During the Battle of Sardarabad, all the churches of Ararat Valley were ringing the bells all the time, day and night. Just uh, as a last uh, kind of sign to the Armenian people that either you leave fighting this battle or you, you will be gone as, as your Western brothers. And then John Elder and James Arrow, they were actually in Armenia before Sardarabad, of course, and, and they opened the YMCA in Armenia, in the Republic of Armenia, February 11, 1980. So we, we Armenians have been looking for the date where the Armenian YMCA was established when the YMCA was established in Armenia. 
Was it back in 1881 when the first uh, Armenian, probably from the Ottoman Empire, went to the YMCA Congress in London? No, you know, it was not. It was YMCA with Armenians, but it was not Armenian YMCA. Was it when the YMCA in Adana was established back in 1908 with only Armenians? No, because it was also not a kind of, you know, uh, uh, exactly uh, totally part of Armenian national movement. It was just Armenian organization in, in, in Ottoman Empire. But it is definitely February 11, 1918 where the first YMCA was op opened by these two persons. So they are not only humanitarian heroes for American ones. They are the founders of the YMCA movement in the Republic of Armenia. And, and they were coordinating huge operation in Armenia. And they were YMCAs in Yerevan, Gyumri, Echmiadzin, and Sevan, different operations. And it's very interesting. You see the, the picture, the bottom picture, it says YMCA camp for orphans in Tzachkadzor. We have YMCA Armenia has had so many events in Tzachkadzor these days. So it's, a, it's an interesting connection to, to that. And, and again, quoting John Elder, had anyone told me a year ago that in addition to running a YMCA, I would be in charge of factories employing seven and a half thousand people, orphanages with 350 children, and a 120 bed hospital. I would have thought them crazy. So they, 20 year old, 25 year old young people were managing huge humanitarian operation in Armenia. And in the picture you will, you, you see it's the, the farewell party to, to John Elder and James Arrow in Yerevan, which was given to them at a state level. So it was the, the government of Armenia organized a state level farewell to these young people because of being uh, grateful to them. Uh, it's, it's, there are lots of interesting stories connected with, with these young people, for example, for some reason, they asked for a loan from the Armenian government because they were short of cash, you know, and the government gave them money. And then when they got the cash from America, they wanted to return the money back to them. And the government refused and said, you, you help Armenia, you know, you do so much work for Armenia in a very, very horrible situation in Armenia. Guys, I mean, it was, it was the genocide and, and plague. I mean, now when we are, you know, we are kind of surrounded by coronavirus, it was a horrible situation in Armenia. We had 700,000 refugees from Western Armenia, mainly concentrated in Yerevan and in, in Echmiadzin, and half of them died because of, uh, because of plug. So, uh, so this, is, this was the story. And of course, uh, of course then uh, the, the, the YMCA in Western Eastern Armenia also got uh, shot down because of, uh, because again, in this bad, bad 2021, uh, if Western Armenia, if Cilicia was kind of handed over, over by Cilicia, by French to Turkey, and the Armenians had to flee from Cilicia to France, Syria, Lebanon, wherever, then Eastern Armenia was, was occupied by, by Bolshevik Russia. And, and before occupying it, they made a nice deal with uh, Kemal Ataturk and, 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 and a fraction whatever was existing, you know, at that time as, as Republic of Armenia. So they made nice deals with them. And then and the last remnant of Armenia was left, you know, uh, just to, to survive uh, uh, for, for another century. And, uh, and the YMCA was immediately closed when the Bolsheviks came because, you know, the YMCA ideology has been extremely unpopular among, among among Bolsheviks, you know, and, and everywhere in the in the world, you know, in Eastern Europe, Central Europe, wherever the Bolsheviks went, the first thing what was to go was the YMC. So this is the story, and uh, I hope I was short, exactly I, as promised. I want to thank you, but I want to thank also these guys, Lozen Chambers, James Perry and Frank Johnson, Asha Jennings, John Elder and James Arrow. Let's remember their names and, and, and let's keep their names in our hearts because whenever we want to motivate our young people 
that there is something to do in this organization, that you can change the world, that a brave, clever young person matters, their stories will definitely be a motivation. I think this story for them is especially important for today's situation because somehow we find it in somehow lost, you know, what, what can we do? But these people were also in, in, in a lost situation where they had to think about their lives, but also above that, beyond that, to think about the lives of the others. And these people are nothing else but the YMCA humanitarian heroes. Each of them could easily get Nobel Peace Prize, easily. And this is the story, and I want to finish it with uh, the present YMCA in Armenia, that we exist, we are there. Five years ago, we planted our YMCA tree in uh, Genocide Memorial. By the way, this is Juan planting it. We could not see his face uh, during the Zoom today, but now we have your picture, Juan. And, uh, and we have the pictures of Syrian Armenian YMCA leaders who were participating to that, uh, uh, to that event. And, uh, and uh, I think it was very important uh, that they were there because they, these young people are direct survivors of the, of the Armenian genocide. And this is all from me. Uh, if you want further reading, uh, I, have, uh, I have these uh, connections. Uh, very interesting work. There is this Kenneth Stewart has a very interesting publication about, uh, about the Armenian, uh, about the YMCA in Ottoman Empire during the war. Uh, it's, it's an online uh, resource and there is the link. Uh, then uh, I would definitely recommend you to read the book uh, by Lou Urenek, uh, The Great Fire, which is, uh, which is the, the story of, uh, the story of uh, Asa Jannings uh, and, and this Smyrna YMCA, Smyrna YMCA history. And then I put there, RP, uh, with your permission, with the resource from Armenian National Institute, which is the exhibit which we we showed in many places and, 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 uh, and we still will be showing it uh, in Armenia. And this is all from me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And if we have some questions. Thank you, Arlan. Yep. Thank you, Vardan. Thank you, Vardan. That was uh, an excellent overview. And, and for sure, you know, we could follow just like if it was a, a, a wonderful, uh, uh, how do you say, a wonderful movie, but the, the, even that this was history was real. This was really a history happening in Armenian building. And, and for me, just, uh, just a thought and a question to you. Uh, obviously, this is the, the history of a success story and the impact of the YMCA through individuals, as you highlighted, the persons behind the YMC letters and how they, they had an impact in our nation and of course internationally. And also a, a success in a peace building from its uh, roots, from its really roots. And it has to do also with the history of Europe. The question is, you know, of course, in the present situation in the world and, and uh, not only with the coronavirus, but beyond the coronavirus, when we see so the conflicts uh, affecting many of our regions in Europe and the world, and you see the YMCA as an institution still there. So what would you say that will be the very practical role of the YMCA, where the YMCA can make a difference today within our mission, within our, our vast history? How do you think that practically the YMCA could really influence more decision takers, nations, community, young people, in terms of making a difference when it comes to peace building? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Juan, I think, thanks for your question. I think, I think YMCA uh, has a huge, uh, huge legacy and asset. I mean, uh, the, the humanity has invested a lot in the YMCA. Uh, to become a powerful organization after 170 years of investment. You know, 
I mean, we know how much money the, 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 the donors, the charities have given the YMCA to build buildings, to have assets, to have economy as an organization and to become an, a huge international network. It's the biggest international network of, you know, of, of non-governmental organization you know, which ever existed. And I think YMCA should definitely use that network for pursuing uh, peace and stability in the world. Because by our composition, we are already uh, a peace work. Because when we bring together YMCA's from Russia and Georgia together in our General Assembly or Ukraine and Russia together in our General Assembly, we are already a setting where, where two conflicting sides are sitting together. So we cannot but create a safe space for these people to be together. And, and we already do it. So I think we need to really, we need to really pursue uh, uh, this, uh, this work and we need to, to do it uh, in a very simple level. Uh, by, by, by activities starting from the grassroots level, by learning together, but also by advocating to the big institutions, uh, you know, that, that we as a new big international network, we have our position on this, on that, on the, on, on the third one. And here we have to be really professional because, because this, uh, I think this, uh, if we go too much into the resolution, resolution taking, uh, uh, as an organization, then then we have to be really prepared for that because that 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 requires uh, professionalism and, and and good context knowledge before before writing down anything on, on a piece of paper because sometimes resolutions become tools of uh, conflict rather than peace. So uh, I don't know if I answered to your question, but uh, <laughs> this is what I what I would. And the other thing is that I always quote my good friend from. Detroit YMCA, Rick Tilbert, who once said, YMCA has no, has no relevant, has no relevant, no, has, YMCA has no sense if it, it doesn't pursue relevance. So we, we have to, we have to do things for, for the communities rather than for ourselves. I think sometimes we, we are too much focused on, on keeping our movement nice and clean, but we forget about what happens around us, you know, around our building and, and the, the communities where, where, which surround us. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. RP, yes. maybe you want to say something. Yes, please. Um, I'm, I, this was so interesting. Some of the um, information that you shared, I knew some of it um, I was reminded of and some of it was brand new. So um, you've used several words that I keep, I keep thinking about as I think of YMCA over the century. Um, heroes, true heroes, absolutely. Commitment, um, models. Yes, I agree. I wanted to point out one thing um, that I just learned. Um, you planted trees about five years ago at the Genocide Memorial. One of the Armenian Assembly's other sister organizations, the Armenia Tree Project, started that tradition at the Genocide Memorial um, back in the mid 90s when Senator Dole from the United States visited America. And since then it's become a tradition for so many visitors to the Genocide Memorial to plant trees. So I'm so glad that you all were planting trees there as well. Okay, so thank you for the great introduction and the very interesting uh, lesson, at least for me, about the YMCA and for organizing this web webinar. Um, so I'm not going to try to talk too long, but there is a lot of things that there are a few things that I would like to say. Um, so we're, basically I want to talk about the life-saving and the critical and the vital work that the YMCA, um, in the Ottoman Empire did, and especially in, um, uh, what was then, I guess, Eastern Armenia. Uh, so two years ago, our sister organization, the Armenian National Institute, uh, launched this website. Um, it's an incredible website about the work of the YMCA in Armenia between 1918 and 1920, before the launch of this exhibit. I don't think anyone really today uh, knew about John Elder or James yeah. Earl, the two young YMCA representatives. 
Um, so photos and journals of their, of their archives, of their experiences in Armenia had been preserved and later discovered by their relatives and then shared with the Armenian National Institute, or ANI. My colleague and the director of ANI, Dr. Ruben Adalian, realized what an incredible treasure had been uncovered and set to work going through all of these. And there was a lot of information. He went through all of these archives to put forth this heretofore untold story, uh, at least in our generation. Uh, but before I continue on with the exhibit itself and the YMCA, I'd like to note here a couple of things. Um, I'm sure you all know this, um, but I think it's worth repeating for you, for me, for our viewers. Um, number one, it is so important, I think, to record either through words, like a journal, or through pictures, so much easier today, and um, your experiences, because, because number two, your, um, your experiences are going to be the legacy that you leave. Your experiences, your photographs will one day be looked at by your kids, your grandkids, your, heir, your heirs, your whoever it is, your, somebody who doesn't even know you but learns about the YMCA. They're going to learn about the things that you've seen and the things that you've done that perhaps they wouldn't otherwise. So I urge you, number three, to search through your already existing um, uh, and perhaps dusty, like mine, uh, archive, because you too might have some, uh, some treasures that you can uncover and share, um, and people will thank you for that, because today and tomorrow, they're going to want to know, and they're going to need to know about the past. Um, okay, so Ruben Adalian went through all the photographs and the journals and the other records, and he put together a 24 poster panel, um, 24 panel ex ex exhibit. And this was a tremendously huge job because there's so much information. And how do you take just the, um, how do you decide what's going to be included in that panel, in that exhibit, because everything is so fascinating. So I'm thinking that there could be more exhibits coming later as like a part, this was part one, there'd be part two, part 24, I don't know, but there's a lot of information. Um, this exhibit, I look at it as kind of a snapshot, if you will, of John Elders and James Errol's um, two years in, in Armenia. Vartan had mentioned that they came to Armenia in 1918. That's true. They came in uh, January of 1918. Um, and they, this snapshot shows with all the pictures and all the text and all the messages and all the letters and all the uh, all the notes that they wrote, it, so, it shows um, how they saved hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children under uh, almost hopeless circumstances. And they lived through that and they were able to find a solution to many problems because they were, they were determined and they, they continued that. So this exhibit, if you haven't yet seen it, it is available to everyone to view. Um, and you can, or download if you'd like, you can go to the ANI website. Now, why don't just read that website address to you all so that you all know exactly what it is. It's the, it's armenian-genocide.org. And if you go to that, you can find this particular exhibit as well as several other exhibits because Ruben is constantly adding more and more information. So you can find these exhibits and much, much more information on the Armenian genocide. It's a source for millions of people. And I don't say that lightly because I do know that um, annually about 7 million people every year have been recorded as going into the Armenian National Institute website. And that I think speaks far better than I could about the, yep. uh, the trustworthiness and the, the, the respect that the website enjoys. Uh, okay, so this particular exhibit has been presented in the United States um, and in Armenia. I did that with Vartan and that was wonderful and in the Artsakh Republic and currently, if I'm not mistaken, Vartan, it's on display at the Vartanis YMCA, correct? Um, so we're happy that it's there and then it's being viewed and then people get a chance to see it. Now, back to the topic. John Elder and James Earl were two young men as, as you heard, 
who had just arrived in Armenia, in Yerevan. Um, World War I was still raging and the armistice was still very, very far off. And who knew when it was going to be? Nobody knew that. Elder and Errol had no idea that they were going to be stranded as the only Americans left in Yerevan and with no outside communications um, because all, all of that was cut off. So they also had no idea that they would become responsible for the entire relief operation that eventually was set up by US-based charities, or that they would be witness to the aftermath of such horrific destruction and ruin, or that they would, or even could, play such a critical role in saving Armenians devastated by war, illness, cholera, typhoid, famine, and more or that they would be called upon to establish and operate orphanages, soup kitchens, hospitals, schools, and more. Or that the newly established government of Armenia would ask them to assist with the ever-growing issues with refugees. Or that they would become heroes to the people of Armenia. These young YMCA representatives did all this and more. And we celebrate their courage, their humanity, their decency and dedication. They are role models today for each of us um, here today on this talk, all YMCA members and anybody else who watches this because they, they can provide that role model for us and that, um, that encouragement and that inspiration to do more. They always gave a bit more of themselves and we can too. The Armenian National Institute and the Armenian Assembly of America are grateful to, the, to their families that found these uh, archives um, and that they shared these archives with us so that their extraordinary contributions and stories are never forgotten. In closing, I'd like to once again thank you, Vartan, and thank the YMCA, all of you who have joined us today. Um, I also want to speak on behalf of the Armenian people and say that the Armenian people will never ever forget what the YMCA did for Armenians at the turn of the 20th century, nor will we ever forget the vital work um, you all continue to do for Armenians and communities throughout the world today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arpi. Thank you. Thank you, Arpi. I can help and if I can answer any questions, I'd be delighted. I do look forward to meeting you all again in Yerevan. Yes. Once the travel bans are over. Over. Lucinda, what do you think? Was it interesting for you? Because. Um, thank you, Vartan Jan. Um, it was fascinating. Um, to be honest, I, I didn't know much uh, of the history of YMCA. Of course, I can, uh, uh, I agree with uh, RP that there were a lot of things that I knew in terms of the journey that, uh, that, that we went through as people, but I didn't know the role of YMCA. And um, to me, this is quite an inspiration and I would advise, or I would um, rather think that if uh, we could make uh, these people's uh, names and characters more alive so that more Armenians would know and get inspired, especially, and people in general. And to go back to what Juan's question was, what can YMCA do in today's world? I think if we go back and see what these people did, and they were very young, and maybe didn't have all the skills and knowledge, but had uh, faith and commitment and compassion, and they went and did what, what, what life was calling them to do, right? And these were running orphanages or running a hospital or running a factory. And I would think that to stay relevant, this is what YMCA in each and every place should focus on. You know, what can we do to really truly change simple people's lives, right? To bring them closer to knowledge, to bring them closer to the truth, and once they know that they can embrace each other and forget the differences. Because after all, those differences come when we have or we have not, 
right? Yeah. Um, so that was the inspiration that I got from your presentation. And I would like to make these people's names um, live in every Armenian's heart and, and known also in the world. What, what did they do? What the, that actually made a lot of difference. And maybe some of the reasons why we're here today, right? So yeah. I um, extend my gratitude and thank you so much for making me part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Lucina. And I hope uh, when our cooperation uh, grows, uh, maybe we will we will organize one day uh, something like that in the American University. I think uh, as as a as a holder of American culture in Armenia, the university, I think it's it's uh, it's such a beautiful story about America that it can be both a, a, a lecture or not a lecture, you know, kind of workshop, but it can, we can also have the exhibit there uh, so that people say, what do you think, Arpi? I think that's a Good great idea. idea. And I would like to um, not only do it in, in Yerevan, I mean, at the AUA, but throughout Yerevan, perhaps in different places or outside of Yerevan, in other regions where it is, because I think mm -hmm. more and more people need to see it and, and uh, hear about it. Thank and you. we have the infrastructure. We can take it all through Armenia and Artsakh too. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. a great so, idea. We can do we that. Will, uh, let's, yeah. let's agree something. When, when, I mean, we are in touch on, on this online, but we, I have already a date with Arpi for a coffee. Maybe yes. We can have another date also involving Lucine, and then we can discuss the idea, what do we with that? But yeah. I also want to ask Adi for a comment, if Adi is there. Because Adi, I, 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 if you remember, we had this book challenge by Johan Willem, and then I, I asked you to read the, the book of, of the Great Fire. So I told a little bit uh, a story from that book. Uh, are, are you intrigued and interested, my friend? I am interested, and, I'm, and it's still on my reading list, which just sadly seems to be getting longer these days. I'm sure it's the same for everyone. Um, a few comments from me. Uh, you know, recently we've the YMCA has globally has been shaking tremendously under the current conditions, with staff losing their jobs, and you know YMCA is on the on the brink of what's next, and many people asking what will the future look like, what will the YMCA look like, and I think this is a timely reminder that you know we've come a long way over 175 years, and we've been through everything. Um, and it's a shame, and shame it's not documented better uh, uh, from a global level, everything the YMCA has survived. But I'm constantly reminded by, when I look through the history of the YMCA, how young people, young people standing up, you know, quite often I remind people the YMCA is not bricks and mortar, it's not swimming pools and climbing walls. It's, it's the people and it's the spirit. And I think the story of the two young Americans is a timely reminder that throughout history, YMCA has been the people. So I thank you for that. Um, another thing as well, and, and, it's, and it's a personal thing, but I don't mind sharing it. Um, I've worked for the YMCA for about 15 years. And when I started working at the international level, I wasn't given the title of a secretary straight away. Um, and then uh, something happened at the World Alliance where my role changed and they made me a secretary. And um, I have a tattoo of, of the YMCA triangle on my, uh, on, my, on my hand, and that is due to the responsibility I felt that title brought. And when you go back through history, not just the stuff you've shared with us, it was traveling secretaries or secretaries of the UN or secretaries of the International Committee that really truly made a stand. So that's not lost on me. And it just reaffirms today that these two young secretaries um, stood for what was right and, and, and did their best. Um, and, and just, just tremendous legacy and, uh, and indebted to those who've paved the way. And I'm sure like the secretaries in here now still trying to pave the way for the next generation. So just to, just to share my thoughts, I think the last thing as well, um, for those who, who now know, I, you know, I live in Kosovo and somehow historical events shape, shape the future of the country or shape, you know, the mindsets of, of the culture. And, um, and I think this is so important and I'm glad to hear you're talking about, you know, doing more things around this in the future with the university or I'm glad to see the tree. Recently, I found, um, and, and Vadan, you will know this, 
I found a letter from uh, Nick Nightingale uh, from the YMCA to the to the UN during the the stuff that was happening in Kosovo. And when I started to show that to the new generations, um, people were crying and in tears and um, them knowing that the YMCA stood for them when it most counted was something so precious and so amazing. I don't think I can find words for it, but I think the YMCA in general, and you can see it today in your presentation, has just been there through the ages and offers people peace, uh, security, light, the way forward. And I think that's been our role in history. And I think that will continue to be our role over the next 150, 200 years. So I think this is really important. I think uh, it's great to see those pictures of the young leaders, uh, the Syrian Armenians, um, embracing this and taking it forward and carrying this legacy. Um, so there's a few things there, but those are my thoughts. And I just want to thank you for for these words in this presentation because I feel uh, feel deeply touched this afternoon. Thank you, Ari. And it was a big pleasure having you, my friend, because not, not only because you represent the World Alliance and you are a router, part of the Roots for Reconciliation project, but, but also because you made a life choice to move from England to Kosovo. And uh, I've been to Kosovo once, but I know the history of Kosovo very well. And I really, uh, I really know that I really knew that it, it would be very special for you to, to learn the story of these American guys who decided to move from America to Ottoman Empire or to, to Russian Empire, you know, to, to stand next to people who need probably a bit more than, than back home. Huh? Thank you, Adi. Thank you, Vardan. Friends, we are 10, 13 minutes over the schedule and uh, if if anybody wants to ask any questions to anybody any of us then I, I, I maybe I can ask Juan to adjourn the meeting eh? Juan thank you Vardam and thank you to all of you wonderful comments and wonderful uh, 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 sharing regarding the way forward, because after this, we we know we know we have, we know that we have the capacity. Uh, we shared in the beginning this radical collaboration that we've been talking about uh, over the past uh, months, and especially over the last weeks under the present circumstances, uh, is more visible than ever. You know, we know we have a role. We know we have a responsibility as YMC. As you said, part of them is the largest network, existing network build up with volunteers in governance, volunteers in programs and staff, bringing them together and making projects possible. So our ambition as YMC of our commitment is to continue doing that. We are blessed with wonderful partners in Europe and across the world to deliver this work. We just need to be more brave in the way we organize it ourselves as an organization and to be more more brave as we look at our brand and our impact and our technical skills to move forward because today's society is very demanding. It's very demanding. We're out there with the largest network. We need to be, uh, uh, as, as, as we always say, we need to be aware of that and our responsibility also to keep on working on the grass level on a daily basis, but to have a global perspective. Otherwise, uh, we will not be able to, 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 to be relevant. We've got wonderful uh, uh, staff skills. We have fantastic opportunities. We have the history, as we have just heard. And we continue to have the passion to build a better world, which is at the end, the role of any movement of civil society. And we are definitely a movement of civil society with an addition that very few others have which we have a very strong Christian roots, only to be faithful to those and to continue building. So thank you so much. Congratulations. Let's keep up with good work. Let's keep Armenia in our hearts today and forever. And let's keep peace work in our front line as, our, as we move forward. Thank you. Blessings. Keep safe in your countries, in your nations. And uh, it was so wonderful to see two crucial cities in the world today linked in this conference. 
Washington DC and Brussels, two capitals in which decisions are being taken. This has been taken that will have an influence across the world through two persons like URP, like you, Elenia, uh, together joining this conference and being in the hot spots where decisions are taken. Thank you so much, Varden. Blessings and have a very good evening and weekend. Thank you, Juan. And just allow me just uh, very shortly to thank everybody else who are around uh, in this webinar. My colleagues, Elenia, Sarka, Martina, I see Olga also joined. So she, hello, Elenia. And uh, so thanks, Olga, for joining. And I just want to read the message from Claude Allen. Uh, he, he writes, uh, hello, sorry, my friends. I have another commitment. Well done. Thank you to make archives alive. So uh, the, uh, the archivist of uh, YMCA, YMCA is very happy that the archives are alive. Thank you very much. We stay Thank connected. You, we stay safe. Thanks, Varda. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank, health, you, Rezo. thank you very much. Health and safety to each of you and your families. Yeah. Thank and the you. last thing I want to say, uh, thanking also Rezi, my colleague, also Marius, uh, who, is, who, is, uh, who is the technical kind of uh, backbone of all these presentations we are organizing. And Marius will, will make the video and uh, then we will decide how to put it. And, and, and anybody who is interested, you can share it, uh, you know, in, in a way you want. Thank you, Marius, for all your support doing this. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, and now you can switch all of us off. <laughs>